Esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. So, welcome everybody. Uh, as you know, today we will um, analyze one of the flagships of, of the Recovery and Resilience Facility Instrument. Uh, and we will explore possible project ideas on, on it, okay? Um, as usual, if Nina doesn't mind, Nina, could you present the facility? Sorry, yes, the facility and the flagship. Of course. Good morning, everybody. Um, today we have um, the our I think sixth uh, session on the recovery and resilience facility and its flagship area and guiding principles. Um, as most of you know. We have, um, since we have been talking about this RRF uh, facility, um, several information also on, on what are the guiding principles. And um, this slides comes from Ulla Engelmann from DT Grow, who shared with us um, the the ground the the um, yeah it was it well, how it says guiding principles or also the groundwork for the flagship area so what we, what we want we want a competitive sustainability in our economy based on environment productivity stability and fairness and the european commission established these seven flagship areas for the investments and reforms that should be um, done with the recovery and resilience facility and we've already spoken about power up, renovate, recharge and refuel, connect and modernize in our past sessions. And today we want to dedicate the session to scale up. So um, the main focus of this flagship area is about um, data cloud capacities and um, processes. And if we look at the annual growth strategy 2021, we see that we have also a definition of the flagship area and it says the EU digital transformation depends on increasing European industrial data cloud capacities and the ability to develop the most powerful cutting edge and sustainable processes. For 2021, the flagship will aim to double the production of semiconductors in Europe to produce 10 times more energy efficient processes. This allows, for instance, the rapid take up of connected cars and to double the share of EU companies using advanced cloud services and big data from 16% um, six, um, today that we have. And for this, we want to um, build investment and reform proposals that could um, go in different directions. We talk um, here. Um, as we say in the Q&A on the RRF on fixed capital, human capital and natural capital, um, cap capital. So investments can be made in different areas and in infrastructure, intangibles, patent softwares, uh, research, but also in training and scaling um, when one part of the human capital or also natural capital, um, capital with renewable and um, natural resources. Um, the environment protection and um, also actions to mitigate climate change. So we have many different options uh, here for the investments and reforms. And for um, all of the, the proposals that will be made by the member states, there are draft templates also available to look further into what is uh, what we should build as kind of proposals um, together with eventual or eventually our governments. Thank you, thank you very much, Nina. So, uh, in order to speak about that, we have with us today Emir Demirkan from Shemi Europe. Uh, welcome, Emir. Should I give you the presentation rights? Emir, do you have your mic off now? Could you put my, your mic on? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yes, I am here. Yes, uh, if I can have the control, I have a couple of slides to set the scene. And Perfect. I think this will help us to, to have a better structured discussion. So how am I doing? Uh, share, right. OK. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. The okay. navigate. Very good. Now the PowerPoint, yes. Yeah. 
So I'm not very used to go to meetings. I need to take this down probably. Can you put it on full screen mode? Yeah, I just need to, yeah, here. Perfect. Okay. Go on, please. Collapse. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> thank you for the introduction. Uh, and thanks also for the invitation. Uh, I tried my best to set the scene, uh, although it was a short notice, but I think it, this, the goal here, my goal at least here, is to, to provide some background information how microelectronics can help uh, better implement the RRF uh, flagship scale up. Right. So, next slide. Oops. Uh, all right. So, a few words about SEMI. SEMI is an industry association. Uh, we represent and connect the global electronics uh, semiconductor supply chain. We have more than uh, 2,300 members uh, and, and, and we have uh, lots of initiatives uh, to help our sector connect and collaborate uh, better. If you are interested in SEMI, please take a look at our website or, or send me an email and then uh, we will be able to, I will be able to help you better. Okay, so COVID-19, uh, of course, COVID-19 has lots of uh, uh, negative, uh, so-called negative uh, effect on many sectors, our economy, European economy or global economy, but also like every challenge, I believe uh, COVID-19 also can come with, with opportunities. It just requires that, you know, we take this uh, positive uh, attitude and then see what we can do under this crisis uh, situation. That's why we call COVID-19 perhaps a silver lining for the semiconductor industry or for European uh, key technologies. So COVID-19 impact on uh, uh, the world is clear. I think it's quite destructive. But uh, when it comes to semiconductor industry, uh, I think the, the picture is not too bad. So let's start from the 2019 already. It was already a hard year for the semiconductor industry because uh, this technology is at the heart or center of the global trade wars or technology trade wars between USA and China. And Europe is, is more and more seeing the impact of this, this uh, trade war between the two giants, since the sector is very global. Uh, but what is the impact of COVID-19 on semiconductors? Yes, there is a weaker consumer and automotive electronics uh, demand, perhaps. But on the other side, uh, there is a very strong push or pull for cloud, server, and digital and medical technologies, which rely also on, on, on microelectronics or semiconductors. And this, that's why semiconductor industry is recognized in Europe, multiple EU member states and globally in the US and Asia as an essential business uh, in the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, pandemic. So that's why uh, this, this sector is very important for Europe to recover and to remain resilient. Uh, what uh, the industry has been doing under these uh, circumstances, for instance, you see a search on, on uh, smart and secure digital solutions. For instance, remote maintenance is booming now Lots of uh, operation required uh, physical uh, travel or, or on-site uh, maintenance now can be done digital. This was a good thing about this crisis. Of course, there are also new opportunities, as I mentioned in my uh, opening. That's, uh, for instance, edge AI, AI at the edge, or medical. This can be areas that where Europe can grow in the post-COVID-19 uh, world with the help of the RRF. So, as I mentioned, the impact of uh, COVID-19 on, on microelectronics or semiconductors, to be more precise, is being uh, not too bad. So, you still see the global semiconductor sales increase 5% compared to last year. And uh, annual sales by the end of this year is projected to increase still 3.3%. And also for 2021, which we, where we will see the real impact of COVID-19, I think uh, the picture is not too bad. 6.2% 6 uh, 6 growth in 2021 is forecasted for the semiconductor industry globally, including Europe. So what is the key message here? Uh, while we know that COVID-19 is really, you know, uh, perhaps some, some shrinking impact on the global economy, but for the semiconductors, since they are the engine of uh, digital world, the, the situation is not the same, perhaps it's even, even positive. So RRF flagship uh, scale up, I think Nina already uh, presented this, but I think it's important to here look at the numbers a bit. So by 2025, the flagship aims to double the production of semiconductors in Europe. 
currently that's around 10 percent uh this is very you know steep uh, in five years to, to double the semiconductor production in europe but it's good to have a high uh, targets and also to produce 10 times more energy efficient pro processors and also this should help uh, europe to 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 accelerate some some digital technologies or connecting technologies like, like cars and, and, and advanced cloud services and big data so how can we do that so here edge ai ai at the end edge uh, comes in so this is an area where europe is much better positioned uh, uh, than other technologies like cloud for instance compared to its main competitors and uh, the future is only positive so shift from cloud to edge the way data is treated is process will change uh, drastically in the next five years now 20 percent of uh, data is processed at the edge but in five years we estimate that 80 percent of data will be treated at the edge at the very very not in data centers or clouds but where the data is collected like uh, cars or, 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 or your computer or your watch wherever you have a microchip so here this is why we call edge ai is key uh, for europe's leadership and it requires special attention uh, in our uh, thinking uh, under the RFF, it's very important to, to prioritize, uh, to shift uh, European economy from cloud to the edge here. And also, this also, of course, needs a heavy backup by the uh, 5G technologies, because uh, this, this, this is the only way to, to make uh, sure, make full use uh, uh, edge AI technology with the 5G technologies that are provided by, by digital infrastructure. Another area I think where it can be important to prioritize in, in RFF is medical electronics. Europe is also still a, a world leader in this field. EU produces 21% of global medical electronics. And we see with the COVID-19 an increased demand on X-ray machines, ventilators, digital testing, diagnostic equipment, and telemedicine which again rely on, on semiconductors and chips for medical segment to grow by uh, 6% next year. So this is also a very strong uh, endorsement, uh, statistically speaking. That's why medical electronics is pivotal to strengthen EU resilience against future pandemics. So COVID-19 is one pandemic, but maybe there will be more pandemics in the future. If you ask, ask experts, they, they clearly say that there might be more and more uh, healthcare crisis in the future. This is why it's important for Europe to strengthen its medical electronics uh, uh, technology. Uh, next is maybe the third uh, prioritization area is digital life. This is where Europe is not that strong, but clearly we need to make investment here and, and, and position Europe better. So with COVID-19, uh, basically life has become digital, right? So increased data use by 47%. Increase internet use by 70% and so on. But also, uh, trusted electronics, trusted digital life is important. We see that 288, uh, sorry, 38% surge in cyber attacks in financial transactions. This is a clear uh, message that uh, Europe needs to invest in trusted electronics and trusted uh, digital life. Okay, so to summarize uh, or put some some uh, actions, so. You put COVID-19, trade tensions, and decoupling together, and what we have today is changing semiconductor geopolitics. So what are the, the short-term recommendations here? Under the RFF, uh, Europe should maintain the ownership of critical, te critical technologies. So if uh, we have to be careful if a foreign investor wants to acquire a key European technology company, this should be protected. And in the long term, by investing in uh, uh, <clears throat> microelectronics technologies i think this is key for europe's technological autonomy which is very key uh, popular or heavily discussed these days by commissioners but also by wide industry how can we maintain europe's technological autonomy here semiconductors is key and rff can support that uh, but this sector possibly like others are, are uh, is a very global uh, industry right so the supply chain is very complex it's not very easy or even possible for Europe to be fully independent from the global dynamics. It's impossible to have a 100% supply chain built in Europe. That's why Europe needs to, to, to build uh, still or strengthen its relations with key partners. We have to, 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 to uh, be clear about that, that not everything can be done, done in Europe. It's important to, to uh, keep relations uh, with other actors. 
but internally in the Europe uh, with RFF, we need a coherent EU member state and industry strategy towards accelerated R&D and manufacturing. Europe is strong in R&D, manufacturing is also a very important, so we need to have a coherent strategy to, to accelerate R&D and manufacturing together, and this is how we say it uh, made in Europe. Right, so uh, maybe I need to remove this here so that you can see. Europe has already a very strategic deep electronics ecosystem. We have uh, great companies, uh, European companies, but also some global uh, players who are invest investing in R&D and manufacturing in Europe. This is our, our some some of the examples that uh, we can put in, a, in one single slide. There are probably many other European companies who, who need to be there. But the message is here, this all IoT applications in automotive, in, in medical or other industry 4.0, uh, 5G and so on, they rely on RTOs, equipment and material suppliers and, 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 and chip design and manufacturing companies. So it's important for, to, for Europe to keep this strategic electronics ecosystem here in Europe and even maintain and grow it. <clears throat> Trying to move to the next slide. Okay, just a second. Right, so paths of action for the future. So if you look at the, the semiconductor industry in Europe, uh, we see four key uh, actions. So first of all, as I mentioned in the opening, is edge AI. This is key. This is where Europe can really be strong. A lot of technologies are heavily dominated, uh, perhaps by Europe's competitors, but edge AI or AI at the edge, it's where Europe is uh, very strong and we need to build on that. And, and RFF, but also other tools like Horizon Europe, key digital technologies, uh, Excel and others would be really, really pivotal, uh, instrumental in this one. Uh, again, a second pillar of our second paths of action, paths of action is, is testing and experimentation, how we can close the gap between R&D and, and manufacturing. Here, I think this testing and experimentation facilities uh, that can be established uh, across Europe can, can play a role. And here again, RFF, I think, uh, can, be, can be important. Increase market share. So Europe uh, wants to double its chip production in the next five years. This is a very uh, tough uh, goal, but there are some tools for that. For instance, IPCI or the resilience and recovery uh, facility also can be important uh, to, to, to enable this or support this. And the skills, the last pillar I think is important. Uh, we need to have the people who can create this technology, uh, who can uh, make sure that this technology grows in Europe. And this can be only done by, by investing in, in workforce development. And here, Digital Europe program, Erasmus Plus, Pack for Skills, but also the, the recovery and resilience facility can play an important role. And talking about skills, uh, I, I know that you have a, another uh, session tomorrow, I think on this. So we just had a round table with uh, Thierry Breton and Nicolas Schmidt on pack for skills uh, where we support to have a, a pack for skills for microelectronics as well, uh, which went very well. And then here I put a link uh, if you like to, to, to get more information about this initiative, please feel free to do so. Uh, I guess the, the slides of this, this call will be shared uh, by the participants. So what is the summary key messages here? Uh, microelectronics is crucial to keep Europe and the global economy running. Uh, without it, we cannot survive the, the, any pandemic crisis. You need to have this technology to stay digital. And there will be lots of new opportunities in, in the uh, post COVID-19 world. So in the field of data, AI and so on, there will be opportunities for Europe to, to, to catch up. Uh, but uh, we need to establish and, and strengthen the value chains in Europe. And this can be done, yes, by investing in, in Europe in the economy or, or across Europe's regions, but also we need to, to choose uh, partners globally so that uh, we can remain still open. Uh, it requires a coherent EU member states and industry strategy towards accelerated R&D and manufacturing. This is key. We need to cover both aspects. Uh, faster implementation is needed and the resilience and recovery facility I think can, can play an important role here. So to conclude, uh, this is a <clears throat> quote by Andy Groove who was the CEO of Intel. Uh, bad companies are destroyed by crisis, good companies survive them 
and great companies are improved by crisis. So I think in Europe, we have many great companies and I believe COVID-19 will be a good test for Europe and with the right tools such as the, the resilience and recovery facility and other European tools or, or national uh, instruments, we will be able to, to, to become great out of this crisis. Thank you. This is my presentation here. I just want to set the scene for a further discussion. You are very welcome, I mean, Thank you for the great presentation. Um, thank you. So it's now it's time for the open dialogue. Uh, is there some question or comment from any of the attendants? If not, I can, I can, I can make some of them. Okay. Um, so one one first comment is that a a in the age is critical. Okay, but this this is not cloud technology, and sometimes uh, people is confused about that. Uh, I I especially worried about the policy makers and those that are evaluating projects uh, i don't know if for them this is clear what is your experience on that emir well i think in the future there will be more and more mixed uh, cloud and edge technology required uh, what our message is here is the to to europe is is very strong in edge or stronger in edge technologies than clouds and uh, cloud relies on edge too so that's why I believe it's important for for uh, evaluators. I think you said this is the word you used to 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 evaluate from that aspect. Europe will need more uh, cloud and edge uh, hybrid approach in the future. So it's important to prioritize this kind of projects. I would say that we need some kind of education or oh, to uh, to uh, to explain what is cloud, what is edge, and how the edge relate to the cloud and how yeah. the, the data flow changes. Right, so data flow of change, uh, if you look at the European data strategy, which was, which is published this year, but also the European AI uh, paper also published this year, the commission itself also recognizes this change. So uh, that's uh, saying that data treatment will move from, from center to the edge uh, in the next uh, five years uh, drastically. So currently it's 20% versus 80%, and in the future it will be 80% versus 20%, 80% being edge. So data will need to be collected, processed, but also the decision, AI decisions have to also be made at the edge, closer yeah. to the where yeah. data, near, near or closer the, uh, the edge where data is collected. So it's important, I think, for Europe, uh, European stakeholders, to, to keep this in mind, we need to prioritize technologies where there is a strong edge aspect. I am also. Uh, I put a question in the the chat. I don't know if sorry if Emil could answer to it. Uh, it's it's uh, about the government clouds because as you know this is something that has been very dynamic in uh, the European Commission. Uh, and also in some countries. What do you think about this government cloud strategy? Do you think it's useful? It can uh, improve the trust that the citizens and the institutions have in governments, or do you think that this is not a good strategy? I mean, well, I think uh, <clears throat> a very, very difficult question. Eh? This is heavily discussed. Uh, I think you are talking about Gaia X project, for instance, right? Yes, if that's this right. is the case, yeah, so this is heavily discussed. There are some ideas. I, I find it positive, of course, if if it is implemented carefully and, and successfully, it can be useful. Uh, I think we still need to understand more about this project. What is the really real end goal here? What are the specific application areas? Which cloud areas this project can support? This is important. But I can think now on, uh, on this, of course, it has to support uh, areas applications where Europe plays a better role or stronger, like like automotive uh, industry, for instance. How we can support the automotive industry in Europe with cloud technologies or medical, right, telediagnostic, and so on. So if this project can support such areas, I think can play an important role. Uh, if you read articles or or other you know opinions about this, some also people say Europe doesn't need that because this is already done by European competitors. 
uh, that's a different view. I believe if it is uh, carefully implemented, supporting European key uh, strengths uh, can play an important role. Thank you, Amir. More comments, questions? Okay, I, I return to my questions. Okay, in the in the goals of the the flagships, the, um, there is one related to the percentage of use of the cloud services uh, on big data. Okay, and uh, yeah, and the goal is to have 16 percent. Okay, I uh, for me it's rare because I think that by now more than 60 percent of the companies are using cloud services what are your well, I think, mm, <clears throat> i'm not so sure if this 16 percent refers to to cloud only because if you look at the beginning of the sentence uh it also talks about connected cars yeah and the double the share of eu companies using advanced cloud service and big data i think it also requires some explanation in the next steps what is you know uh, advanced cloud services and big data these are very, I think, generalized terms which require further explanation so that member states, I think, carefully uh, try to reach this, this target goals under the, the resil resilience and recovery uh, facility. Uh, I wouldn't bother so much about this number 16% there. It all depends on what it really means. Uh, uh, these are you know, short papers. We see a number there, yes, but it always requires some, some additional explanation so that uh, member states and uh, industry also can understand where we should go together. Yeah, but I think it's important because if we are presenting projects to our policymakers on this point, they will take the official paper, you know, and what is advanced cloud service and big data is key for them. Okay, yeah. probably you or others on the European Commission understand, but uh, at the end we are going to our our regional or national policymakers, and they need to have a good understanding of that. Okay, for example, is using AI in the edge one of these uh, could it, could be understand as part of this percentage? I think we should all, more or less, all of us, or or you know, uh, most of us should have a common understanding here. So that you know, we can talk about the similar and, and uh, similar projects for uh, with, with similar or same goals. I agree with you. It's important to to take this serious. Uh, perhaps we can ask the Commission uh, what is meant there uh, in the next uh, step, so that member states, uh, you know, uh, everyone has the same same uh, goals here. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Marek. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Yes, I, I, I just because there's a big discussion on, on, on using photonics and replacing this, um, you know, copper and, and so on. So, 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 could, could you could you refer a little bit? You didn't in in your presentation. Good morning, to everyone. Should I talk about photonics? It, it, it's part of scaling up. If you if you look about functionality of semiconductors, it's, it's about processing data and 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 the, this now developing the silicon photonics very much. Uh, and Netherlands is very much a cutting, cutting yeah. edge in this. So can you can you refer to this? Because it, it's not about the production. It's about f function of the semiconductor. So you could yes. replace it if we have better uh, uh, better technologies. Yeah, I I fully agree with that. There is a very strong uh, convergence between uh, semiconductors and photonics uh, technologies. Uh, I, I, I can only recommend that uh, future projects, specific projects under the, the flagship program, scale up, also supports, uh, of course, photonics technologies that are used in the in the semiconductor, broader semiconductor uh, ecosystem. Definitely. Okay, Patrick, would you would you Ask your question. Yes. Good morning. Uh, yes. It's more or less the same question or same remark as uh, regarding photonics. Uh, is there uh, are there specific uh, technology to invest or to scale up for 
to to meet uh, this, this uh, challenge you mentioned on uh, edge edge AI. Um, next generation of uh, semiconductor or, or um, complementary technology, material technology, uh, printed technology, photonics, yes? Yeah. Yes, I think there are many. <clears throat> I'm not a technologist uh, myself, but I, I think uh, this should be answered by, by real uh, Europe's uh, great engineers and R&D hubs or, or where you can find these engineers in our uh, key companies. Uh, I believe it's important to, to, to you know, consider uh, all technologies which will help us to, to uh, you know, uh, make Europe strong, strong player, stronger player at the edge AI. Uh, Europe already has some some uh, very important European initiatives or European technologies or technologies invented and then built here, for, for instance, FTSOI and so on. These are important to, to maintain and even uh, make strength stronger in the next uh, steps uh, to support Europe's 5G and edge AI uh, bit. Thank you. More comments or questions? What about, Amir, the concentration of these uh, companies and of the power of Europe in just uh, many uh, few uh, countries inside Europe. Are there problems? Right. Well, competition is, is uh, getting fiercer, especially I think in, in semiconductor industry, we need to be very uh, careful. Why? Because each country across the world understood that this technology is key for sovereignty, for, for uh, economic power, but also for, for trade issues or, or for, for the post-COVID-19 uh, recovery. So Europe has great companies that are sub supplying and, and the semiconductor industry that are doing a lot of design, uh, sorry, uh, R&D activities for, for this technology. In particular, Europe's R&D is great. And every, I can tell you, this is what we discuss with, with CEOs and, and other uh, players globally, it's clear that all regions across the world want to copy paste what Europe does in R&D. Like IMEC, Letiv, Ranofer, VTT, these are really Europe's uh, flagship R&D organizations. There are many more probably that are not listed here. So it's important to, to, to build on this. And for instance, uh, Europe has great companies in equipment, semiconductor equipment and material. You probably all know ASML, which is you know uh, quite now on the media these days due to trade issues if ASML can ship to China or this and that. So it's, it's very important to, 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 to invest further in this technology, semiconductor manufacturing equipment and material. You see that uh, this is where Europe is strongest. And also then it comes to the design and manufacturing. Yes, there are great companies here as well, Infineon, Bosch, XFEP, NXV, SD, and also Europe has some international global players uh, working in Europe, so like Intel and Global Foundries. Uh, yes, my, my only uh, answer, clear answer for, for, for to, your, to your question, Antonio, is yes, Europe has great companies and enabling and supporting the IoT applications in automotive, in healthcare, in other areas, uh, as you see in, uh, above. Okay, I see that there is a new comment in the chat. <clears throat> yeah. What I can uh, say before I, I take a question, for instance, you, in the US now, they talk about Chips for America Act. They want to support the semiconductor industry uh, further. They already do a lot of support. Uh, and if you go to China, you know that semiconductors, uh, China wants to have a homegrown domestic semiconductor industry. They mainly rely perhaps on, on foreign supplies now, but they want to change that, but it's not easy. But they are making efforts and financial investments so it's important to, to really position microelectronics at the center of uh, Europe's post-COVID-19 recovery so that we don't uh, lag behind in this technology. Thank Sorry, I'm, I'm okay for the question. Anna, okay. Nina. <laughs> Thank you, Amien. Um, I was just wondering, since I'm not an expert in this field, if I see here the um, uh, the big companies that, uh, that built the ecosystem, where are 
how are SMEs in Europe uh, located in which um, part of this electronics ecosystem and how can we also strengthen them to uh, to make uh, Europe's um, supply chain here um, more resilient and stronger? Yeah, great question. Thank you for this. Indeed, SMEs is important. So SEMI has uh, more than around 300 members in Europe and most of them are SME. Yes, this sector perhaps uh, you know often recognized with big companies, but SMEs are very important. And if we go to 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 paths of action for the future, especially in IPCI, but also in in AJI, I think in Horizon Europe, KDT, IPCI, and so on, in these tools, it's very important to 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 prioritize SME and big company uh, collaboration. So we need to to take uh, both you know good things from uh, each each uh, fields. SMEs are very agile. They have the, the innovative solutions. Uh, they can you know quickly act and so on. And then the big companies have has have the volume to 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 pro power to 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 build on the innovation coming from SMEs. It's important to 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 invest in the collaboration between the two. This is this is a very important key. And the European economy relies on SMEs. And perhaps COVID-19 affected uh, SMEs more than uh, big companies, or big companies perhaps can can have you know uh, some 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 uh, let's say plan Bs to 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 survive the crisis or even get better. But it's important to to really uh, pay attention specifically to to SMEs. Thank you, Amir. More questions, comments. Pasco, do you have uh, one strong microelectronic industry in Portugal? Well, uh, not not too strong. Uh, in fact, in the past uh, there was uh, some uh, well a strong company that uh, belongs to an uh, international one, but uh, today uh, is is not so so heavy. So, but there, there are some uh, some entities that are producing uh, chips. Yes. Thank you. They 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 came from Infineon. Uh, well, after some uh, some uh, you know some uh, problems, uh, they were bought by another one, and uh, today is it not so big as in the past. Thank you, Asko. I know that we have some uh, microelectronics company in in Spain, and the Basque Country is uh, a good place to look at. Um, but I feel feel that we are not strong. As it's a feeling, eh? I, probably I don't know. But my sensation is that in in Europe, everything is concentrated around Germany. Is that so, Emil? Uh, <clears throat> not so. Uh... Yes, Germany is very strong. I think with two, at least two hubs. Let's say one in uh, Saxony in Dresden uh, area, but also in Bavaria, where where you know uh, some big companies are headquartered. Uh, but uh, semiconductor industry is really working on clusters. So in Europe you have uh, a few of them. I can easily count, for instance, uh, Leuven in Belgium is a strong uh, semiconductor electronics uh, cluster. And then you have Anhoyman in Netherlands, where ASML uh, is located, and also I think NXP. And then you have other other clusters, like for instance north of Italy, you have, uh, and also south of Italy, you have uh, ST there, and, and and other other companies possibly. Uh, Lyon, Grenoble area is very important. Kroll uh, near Paris is an important uh, cluster for semiconductors in France. Uh, in Austria, you have two. Uh, one in Villach, uh, other one I can't remember now, which we call Silicon Alps. So there are a couple of clusters, I think uh, more than a couple actually, uh, very important in Europe, and it's important to, to strengthen them. There are also others across or around Europe, like in, in UK, if you go to Bristol area, there is a strong semiconductor cluster there, uh, it's a compound cluster. Also in Israel, uh, which is part of Excel program, you see a lot of innovation and also companies investing in Israel ecosystem. So it's important to connect these clusters. Uh, I think it's, uh, they all have something to give. In Spain and Portugal, I think in Spain, north of Spain, there are a few, a few companies. Uh, probably there are some more that I am not very familiar with. Uh, in Portugal, I'm not so familiar. Uh, also now we see some emerging or more, like I say, developing clusters like in, in other parts of Europe, like Romania, Bulgaria 
where we see more participants are, are getting involved in Excel, uh, JU projects. So it's important to keep these regions, all of them active and connect them. <clears throat> Have you participated in the making proposals for the RF uh, plans in Germany or in those countries that you mentioned? Are you aware if uh, the industry is proposing for those plans? For the Under the, uh, that, that I'm not very familiar. Uh, if uh, there are some, some pro yeah, I mean, uh, there must be, but not that I know uh, one. I know the industry is, is active now, working heavily on IPCI. Uh, there's already one IPCI project uh, in microelectronics and the industry is working on the second. I believe uh, these examples can be also, you know, transferred, uh, built on uh, maybe, you know, also under the flagship scale up program. That's a that good does, question. That's important because as far as I understand, here in the flagship um, or in the RRF, uh, instrument uh, we or the companies can ask for investment not only for innovation support okay and so the dimension is is, is different and for us it's very important to understand what is happening if the company knows about the opportunity if they are taking it if they are proposing uh, that's yeah. uh, a critical part of what we are discussing during this month. Okay, yeah, that's important, and I think uh, that's also an action item uh, for for at least uh, our association to really make sure that companies are aware of this this program. We know that often what we discuss in in Brussels doesn't necessarily go easily to the national and regional level. So we need to make sure that companies, in particular SMEs, are are aware of of uh, this action. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I am surprised because sometimes even the big ones doesn't doesn't really uh, fully understand the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Aurora. Bon dia, Aurora. Are you there? <laughs> bon dia. Good morning. Um, well, you you know I'm always thinking about global <laughs> effects and transcontinental uh, so my my point is uh, is is what i wrote on the questions on the chat um surely I'm, I'm really really sure that the quality of the components of the products made by the companies that were pointed in in the in the powerpoint uh, will not create any doubt of quality and they cost, of course, more than what uh, until very recently everyone was using coming from China for nothing. Um, so the final products will be better and that, that for sure is, is uh, an improvement. But uh, if the other parts of the world don't do the same, the competition will be furious, I'm sure. So I think we should uh, prepare something about that. Yeah, <clears throat> if I can comment, yes, the global aspect is very important, especially for uh, microelectronics industry. You see that there are lots of already investments made and future plans for in, in USA, uh, Chips for America Act, and there are other, other proposals in China too. So it's important to 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 you know invest in quality. And what do you what do I mean by quality or what? What do I understand from your quality uh, statements? Here, I think the European uh, Commission already put the, the, the goal. Right? So, the most powerful cutting edge and sustainable processors. I think these are three important uh, you know, quality aspects, so to say, to, to consider. Okay. Um, what about a cloud, a real cloud for Europe? What about the possibility to develop one strong business around not the edge, but about the cloud? What, is, what are we lacking in order to be able to do that? Well, we, we advocate uh, edge and, and cloud technologies together. So I believe relying on the cloud is not the, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, 
rights uh, or you know, success guaranteeing uh, paths. I believe, uh, as I mentioned, Europe is strong already, very well positioned in the edge technologies. And together with 5G, this should be the way uh, for Europe to grow. Cloud only technology, I think it's, uh, I'm not so sure how Europe can be you know, uh, competitive in this field. It's already very competitive. So, but there's a gap in, in edge technologies where Europe is better positioned. So my recommendation, uh, what we discussed with our industries and so on, is really uh, edge, edge AI uh, is important. And this is uh, where European microelectronics industry can really support uh, with, with its uh, enormous uh, capabilities. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, disagree, okay? But at the end, this is a uh, edge by, the, by itself will not be enough, okay? So what happens if we don't develop our capacities on cloud? Perhaps in the future we could only be one part of the general infrastructure or the general network, okay? And we could be dependent of the cloud services because at the end that will be needed for sure, okay? Yeah, I yeah. I understand what is edge, <coughs> and I, I understand the, the 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 possibilities of the edge, but the cloud will be needed, okay? Yes. If we lose that uh, that um, market. Totally, we will be fully dependent of the cloud of the others, mm. and we will need the cloud. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's why, uh, since I say since the beginning, it's important to really consider edge and cloud together. It will not be one of them. I think uh, there will be even in the I think one of the EU papers this clearly mentioned that there will be more and more you know uh, mixed uh, cloud and edge technologies together. It's impossible that I didn't talk about one only, or it will be on the edge, or it will be on the cloud. So uh, I don't think this is a uh, this would be correct to, to structure. So it's important to consider both. What we say is it's important to you know uh, in, in, you know incorporate edge technology more uh, more than today in, in Europe's future. But certainly I agree with you that uh, cloud should be also of course uh, kept high on the agenda. Okay. More comments, more questions. Pasco. Yes. Well, um, I don't know if I have a question, but um, I have some uh, some concerns. Uh, I think that um, the problem in Europe about the cloud, and I, I don't know if in the future will appear also uh, with the edge, is like um, well, is missing some kind of um, um, easy interface, and um, uh, because I think at this moment is is uh, very complex uh, to use European clouds, and um, another uh, item that is important is uh, to create um, a tool that allow everybody to move the the information from one one place to another one because i think that's one of the concerns is if people um, stay stuck with uh, with uh, only one supplier and i think that it was one of the aims of the gaia project but i don't know exactly so maybe you can uh, uh, say something about about this Well, uh, yeah. If you are asking this to me, uh, I also have to, to you know, uh, go through again the Gaia X project. Uh, what are the details there? How uh, you know uh, they propose? I, I work for. I, I am from Semi, right? So we are really focused on on the semiconductor uh, technologies. What we are doing is is to to promote this technology in Europe. Of course, that also means that in the Gaia X projects. Uh, we will advocate. We are advocating a strong, uh, you know, a semiconductor presence. This is this is our position clearly. So for the rest, of course, we have to work with other stakeholders. How this project can be successful? Uh, it cannot be that you know uh, only one uh, aspect is covered and then this will bring success. So it's important to to, to make sure that all uh, important aspects are covered, be it software, 
uh, be it uh, hardware and so on. So it's important to keep uh, everything under consideration carefully and invest uh, in a balanced manner, whatever, whatever needed. Thank you, thank you. So Marek is commenting about the role of clusters in this uh, flagship and he is uh, participating in research, up and reskilling, uptake, acceleration, raising awareness, multiplication, pulling consortia for common projects. What else? What can we do in this in this flagship? Who wants to add? I, I, I want to comment from my experience, okay? Uh, because uh, we have been working several years on artificial intelligence and cloud services developing for some of our members, okay? It was a very good presentation also past Friday on uh, the Sweden company working with uh, with also this this field, okay? And one of the m biggest problems that I found two, three years ago was for the companies that should use the technology to understand the capabilities of the edge, okay? Because mostly now our, you know, it's difficult to keep with the advance of the technology. And so now many, many companies are thinking on how to go to the cloud. And the cloud is easy to manage, easy, everything is together to put the data all together in one place to control it, it's quick, quick, uh, quick, easy to know what is happening with the data, okay? But if you implement edge, the intelligence is distributed and every device on the edge can take different decisions with different data. And that is quite difficult to understand and to control from from the uh, teams developing solutions. And for me, this is one of the big challenges. And clusters can help in understanding and um, prototyping solutions in this area. Hmm. I don't know if you have found this kind of problems, Emir, on the... On the... <clears throat> I think... Uh... When you when you, we talk, we say that, for instance, yes, companies want to use cloud, yes, but these are perhaps you know technology user uh, aspects, aspects, but also there is the technology creation aspect. So it's important to create this technology, invest in technology, uh, edge technologies, cloud technologies is important. Of course, companies will have to 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 use clouds uh, to you know manage information and, and other uh, important assets. Yes, but uh, we need to also invest in creating these two technologies cloud be it cloud or edge uh, what can clusters uh, help uh, this is also i think uh, can be you know maybe build on my my one of my slides here the last one i think for instance testing and experimentation is important right you mentioned about prototype you see that many uh, R&D hubs and, and companies in Europe are, are located in clusters, a few clusters, and we need to 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 bring prototypes or research uh, from R&D hubs to to to, to uh, near market or even on the markets. This is why it's important to uh, prioritize testing and experimentation and establish facilities or one single European facility to to wrap it up wrap it up this this process how you can move from uh, uh, research to to market near markets uh, products uh, testing and experimentation facilities can be important <clears throat> yeah demonstrators no places where you can find um, uses for that, that technology okay yeah. because in my experience it's a real problem I mean, I was really surprised because we were speaking with big teams of uh, technological people, so people with uh, big experience, but the, the change on the control flow of the data is quite uh, challenging for them. They want to be in control. And we, uh, the, the age is other kind of control. You, you, you are not so, so in, so in, 
in control of what is happening. There is also one, one uh, or there was also one challenge two years ago, past year, I don't know this year if, if we have improved it or not, but there were not so many um, uh, software able to control this kind of devices in a, in a, a world network, you know? It's not the same to control one or 10 of 15, that thousands of them. Are there any improvement in this field? Because I think that is key for the development of the, not, not yeah. the devices themselves, but the control of the devices. Well, if you if we have a device that's connected, I think that has to be controlled, right? So this is inevitable. So if you look at the number of uh, ob like uh, devices, objects, uh, things uh, that are connected uh, is, is booming. So it, it will only increase. There will be only a uh, you know, surge in the number of uh, products that are connected, smart devices, connected devices. And I think this is inevitable. And of course, it has to be uh, carefully uh, controlled. And by control, I think you mean the security, cyber security aspects. This is, this is important. That's why I think trusted electronics, trusted uh, cyber physical systems uh, are becoming important with the rise of digital uh, life. Uh, but I think this is not something that you can stop. It, it, I think it's already uh, you know, going ahead. There will be more and more devices like watches and medical equipment, uh, you know, which monitor our health and cars, connected cars that can be controlled and so on. This will only increase. There, I, I can't remember now the number on top of my head, but uh, we are talking about billions of devices uh, that will be you know, uh, multiply in the near future. So. Europe has to, of course, uh, consider this reality. It's a reality. It's a fact that, that these devices will increase. Uh, we are using them more and more in our lives. It facilitates our life, and it's important for Europe to, to, to uh, European companies to, to, to be the lead of this, this uh, increase. And we have a very good position there. We have companies which enable this technology, like NXP, ST, Infineon, uh, Bosch Semiconductors, and so on that are really uh, enabling medical technologies, automotive technologies and others, and it's important to, to protect this. Okay. So, any last question or comment? If not, uh, thank you very much, Emir, for your uh, collaboration today with us. I want to encourage clusters on working on this area and, and proposing new uh, new solutions. Okay, if I am right, Nina could correct me. Next Wednesday we are speaking out reskilling up a skilling. Yes, Flex next Wednesday, yeah. eight thirty, uh, reskill and upskill the last flagship area. That's very important one. So you are all invited to join us and. Anyway, have a very good day today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Antonio. Bye.